All right. Good evening. It's uh, it's the holidays. That's why I have Christmas lights behind me. I'm here to do a tutorial for the Willow Randomizer, which has come out recently and been in development by uh, oh, by whom again? By Dan. <laughs> I think Dan is the uh, best handle I've got. Dangia. Sounds like Jiggly Saint and Vani Van have been helping. Uh, Broadster told me about it initially. So I guess we're the, the testers and debuggers for it. Um, I got a seed there. Uh, it's all the even numbers and all the odd numbers uh, suggested by Invarial. Those uh, letters and numbers there are the flags. These are just the default flags. Um, the randomizer currently is implemented as a, a web page. It's on uh, djrandos.com slash willow.html um, It's at the time of this video is version 0.2.2 0 .2 uh, I did 0 0.2.1 first but I found a bug in it and I got Dan to fix it so I'm gonna run the seed tonight and uh, don't worry about my splits there that's I don't think I'll ever top that so the reason why my splits are like that there's those uh, set theory brackets there uh, Powder, Spectre, Knock Marquee, and Kane are the four things you need for go mode, or being able to reach the final boss, specifically. But you cannot beat the final boss until you have the powered up Kane, which, uh, with default settings, requires level 13, which is about 39,000 experience. So, you want to look at gaining experience as you search the world map for those four items. Uh, chances are you'll have all four items before you're level 13, but from there, you should have access to pretty much everywhere. You'll have a couple good options for grinding experience. And I'll just talk about all that as I'm playing the seed here. Hmm. So yeah, that first... <laughs> There's always one screen you check immediately right at the start. And if you get one of those four items, then you'll have a, a 9 or 10 second split there. So I'm just going to try to talk about the game in such a way that even if you haven't played Willow before, um, you should be able to try out the randomizer. I mean, the NES game is, is good in some ways, but it certainly suffers from uh, not doing a very good job of telling the player where to go. <laughs> um, so playing the randomizer can be another fun way to experience it. I guess the, the plot, although it doesn't really have much plot. I guess like this intro right here is uh, all the plot you need. Everything is just kind of little sub-stories along the way. Your usual uh, Dragon Quest or RPG style of story structure. So I guess I'll hit start and talk about uh, what goes on. So that's Willow's house right there. You can get your health restored there. But you want to go one screen to the right and go in here. This is where uh, your wizard mentor lives. He'll give you an item. Oh cool, he gave me the Wonder Sword, which is uh, the best sword. <laughs> Second best sword, I guess. So you press start to open the menu. They start you with the Long Sword in this, but I'm gonna go with the Long Sword, or the Wonder Sword here. And default setting for the randomizer, they also give you an Ocarina that costs 0 MP. This is an item that lets you warp around. You can add Nokmar, the final area, to your list of locations. I like to go to Do second. I mean, you can, in the normal game you can walk there from Nelwyn, but there's no reason to when you have an ocarina that can just bring you there. The enemies there are really easy and only give 10 experience. You don't really want to bother with them. There's better grinding afoot when you have an ocarina that can bring you anywhere. So in Dew, um, one screen to the left of where Poe drops you off is the village chief. He'll give you an item if you have the wood shield. Which is the worst shield in the game. I don't think it can, like, block any fireballs of any kind. But you want to go all the way to the bottom left here. In the vanilla game, this guy gives you the wood shield. Uh, but, you know, in randomizer, you get a anything. Oh, he gave me a really good shield. I think this is the best shield, actually. Yep, <laughs> that's really funny. Okay. Um, well now that I have good gear, I guess I'll go out the west edge of town here. Um, so in the normal game you like go here when you're done with everything and do, and then it's like kind of a long trek to the next area, but we have an ocarina, we don't actually want to walk that way. 
If you go over here, there's a place that I call Monkey Cave, because there's going to be some monkeys along the way. I might get killed, actually. So, a little thing about the controls here. So if you press B with a direction, you'll poke the sword in the direction you picked. Oh, nice, I didn't get ambushed by monkeys. Very lucky. Also, standing still, you'll do a swing. Um, at level 1, this will be a slow swing. Uh, the long sword is the lightest sword, you could say. It's the easiest to swing. So when Willow reaches level 2 at 150 experience, you'll swing the sword faster. And at level 3, you swing it faster yet. I think level 4 would be the max speed. Another thing to note is when you get any item in the randomizer, you get your HP and MP refilled. So if you know where items are, you can uh, get your stats top, like you can get your you know, get your meters topped up along the way. Uh, there are consequences for dying, even in the randomizer. There's actually a setting to um, retain items found after dying, which is on by default. Uh, but the way experience works, um, if you're on the outside map, the game like takes a snapshot of your your current level on every screen, pretty much, or I guess all the time. So if I reached 150 experience and died, I would respawn at level 2 with 150 experience. And if I died with 200, I'd respawn at level 2 with 150 experience. However, if you're in a dungeon, like a cave or a, one of the towers in one of the side areas, uh, then the game isn't saving your level, so you have to be more careful in caves. More punishing than dying in Dark Souls, you don't, you don't leave a puddle, like your experience will just be gone. Chaos got two new PVs today. Oh, good stuff. Anyway, so where I'm going now here... Oh, I thought I could one-shot this guy with Wonder Sword. I guess not. So there's an item over here. Has to... You have to fight these green snakes, though. Actually, I'll fight the next one with the long sword and uh, without a shield show that it can be done. You gotta do... yeah. You gotta weave between these fireballs. If you haven't got a shield. But I'm just proving that it's possible, even if you haven't got any gear. You want to stab a little bit early so that this guy like falls onto the later active frames of your sword. The necklace. Okay. That's an interesting item. I'll explain what that does. I'm gonna use the ocarina now to go to the bar. So you press A to use your magic, whatever you have equipped there. Actually, because I have a good shield, I can open Tyrus Lane, but I'll talk about that later. So in the vanilla game, when you uh, get the handcuffs key and talk to Mad Mardigan, he goes to this bar, and you get this extra long dialogue, and what this does is it makes a, a white squirrel appear on the map, <laughs> and the squirrel will give you an item. So basically, Necklace unlocks the bar. Oh, and he kind of explains that um, there's like an underground river just around the corner from this bar. Uh, if you if you don't have a Waka Seed though, you lose one health every frame. And you can't use magic in there either, so you can't use the heal mace to heal yourself. So it's kind of a checkpoint, I guess. Anyway, if you do find the handcuffs key, Mad Mardigan is uh, just around the corner from the bar over here. If you go one, south, one screen south of him, there's a, a chest right here. The chest looks like a suitcase, I guess. Metal shield. Okay, I've got lots of shields. Shields don't do a lot for you in this game. You know, they said they're, they're said to increase your defense, but I think it's just referring to the defense rating of your shield. Like how much... How much damage on a fireball they can absorb. Oh, we got these skeletons. Uh, they're pretty tough to fight, especially with a sword that swings slowly. These horse flies are also kind of dangerous to fight without magic of some kind. So on the, 
this this forest here is just like a big grid. Uh, the west edge of it has an item that I'm trying to get to, but I'm also just trying to avoid skeletons. Oh, that uh, tornado enemy there is a, a magic using enemy. Turstorm magic. Oh, I think the full name of this is a uh, flutterstorm. It basically blows away weak enemies, which uh, isn't much. It's probably one of the more useless spells. Yeah, these guys too. Can't hurt them with the sword. You need a, a special sword called the Devil Eye to damage them. Any enemy that uses magic is like that, actually. They're kind of ethereal. The Devil Eye is also a very heavy sword. You'll swing it slowly until level 11, I think. Still a pretty good thing to have, even in the randomizer. Okay, so I'm gonna head south here. Oh, I'm gonna turn back to this guy. Uh, this way might not might not be optimal actually because of the way it hooks upward over here. But you're probably going this way anyway after getting that chest. Yes, yeah, so these horseflies will like go fast and then change directions. Bear that in mind when fighting them. Acorn magic is really good for dealing with them. Yeah, this guy you want to like walk at him to make him charge at you. Oh yeah, sometimes you'll get that rare like white bubble as a drop from an enemy. It gives you more HP if you can touch it or hit it with your sword. Oh wait, before I go too far, uh, the squirrel appears around the corner. The other way to get here is to go uh, east from Mad Mardigan and then south. Heal Mace Magic, that's very good. Heal Mace costs 20 MP, but it restores a lot of HP, and it's one of the only ways to heal in this game, especially while you're on the road. It's a good thing to find. It's not essential, but it's really good. So, I like to head into here backwards. Um, you can go to this blue cave from the front, uh, if you go to Poe's house, but there's nothing, like, along the way. There's, like, no reason to enter blue cave from the front. But Shalindria also shows up and gives you an item here, so you might as well go into blue cave in reverse. I'll talk about, uh, the other reason why right after I get this item. Wow. I can also explain now. Handcuffs key. Okay, well, next time I go to the bar, I'll get a thing from Mad Morgan then. Okay, so in this blue cave, if you have the... Like, this is the exit of blue cave. This is the entrance. It doesn't normally look like this, though. Like, here's the entrance. Oh, it's sealed. If you have the bracelet, uh, that wall will disappear, and you can go through blue cave, but... If you enter through the rear entrance, you can always go, like, into Blue Cave in reverse. It's like a, a one-way trip. You're not really stuck, though, because you have the ocarina, though. So there's, uh, four items in Blue Cave. There's a chest, like, right by the entrance here. Blue Cave's a pretty good place to check out early. The enemies aren't too dangerous, either. Actually, I guess there's some dangerous enemies. Oh, this is the scale! Um, there's a blacksmith in the village of Dew, and if you show him the dragon scale, he'll give you two items. I'll, uh, I'll cash you that in uh, when I'm done in Blue Cave. If I'm lucky, I'll find the magic of Fleet in here, which is, uh, it's like the outside spell, or evac spell, exit spell, warp spell. It, it lets you warp out of a cave. <laughs> no, you don't want to go down there. That's just kind of a big detour. Uh, these little bats will sometimes transform into a bigger bat that's worth more experience. Oh, yeah, these bees just kind of appear out of nowhere. You have to get close to them to get their attention sometimes. So level 4 is going to be at 710 experience. And then after that, level 5 is at 2000. The experience curve in this game is really bumpy. Renew magic is interesting. It uh, transforms enemies into different enemies. <laughs> 
So if you see something that's just like too dangerous, you can try casting Renew on it. Change it see like these guys. I'm gonna try it on these skeletons and see if it works. Oh no, I made monkeys. Monkeys are dangerous. Oh, well, I guess their AI was broken with, <laughs> with Renew. Although if those skeletons show up, I'll show you uh, a trick to deal with them. Uh, the flute. Okay, flute is good. Um, there's a boss in uh, River Cave, I call it. It's the. It's on the other side of that underground river by the bar I was talking about. There's like a, a brown cave with like a watery blue background. I'm trying to make these skeletons respawn. So I can talk about how to deal with them. Okay. So basically they kind of like come out like that. My trick didn't work at all. <laughs> so I got the other one involved. Actually, I'll have a chance to show it off on my way back from the town bed. Okay, one more item in this cave. go down three screens, and I think there's a 50% chance of skeletons spawning on each screen. Extra dangerous red skeletons on this screen. Yep, okay. So the thing about these skeletons is, like, you can often get them to stand sideways. That's, like, way easier than trying to fight them. Quote-unquote, legit. Flame sword. Okay. I can maybe swing this one faster, but I'm still gonna use Wonder Sword. Let's see, just to compare though, you know, look how fast I can swing the Long Sword, but the, I only have 8 strength. Flame Sword, 4 times stronger, but I swing it slower. Wonder Sword, twice as strong as Flame Sword, but I also swing it slowly. So I guess I got pretty lucky. So here's the trick I was trying to describe. You can kind of kick that guy into the notch. I didn't get fleet, so I have to walk out of the cave. But now I'm also level 4, which is pretty good. Oop. So this is where having, uh... Does on work on these things? I don't think it does. Definitely not. I can use Renew? Actually, no. Oop. Not quite what I had in mind. looking to abuse the notch again. The screen's also supposed to like flash pink in the all the dark regions when you use that, but the randomizer turns off a lot of flashing graphical defects by default. You can turn them back on if you want. I keep forgetting to do that. I I actually like having the flashing effects, it makes my magic effects feel more powerful. <laughs> Alright, get my ocarina out. Let's go back to the bar, talk to Mad Mardigan and get the... get an item for the handcuffs key. Another fun fact in the vanilla game, you have to hold up to get text to scroll faster, but in randomizer all the text scrolls faster all the time. So I'm gonna go to Tears Lean next. I'm just gonna talk about Tears Lean. Um, it's the second last area you go to. For those who've seen the movie, you know, they're always making the Willow's like, we have to get to Tears Lean, we'll be safe there. And then they get there and the, the city is abandoned. <laughs> And it's the same thing in the NES game. It's an empty area. There's nobody there. Kaiser Sword, okay. <clears throat> That's a second best sword. Oh, I still have my ocarina. I can just use it. You can't use the ocarina if there's like a chest or a person to talk to on screen. 
not quite sure why that is. Probably because the engine, like, can't handle that level of spirits. Oh, right! I gotta go cash in the scale and do before I do this. I think I'm gonna be in Tears Lean for a little while. Actually, it's the last place I can think of going here. So there's, the other places I can go to are kind of blocked off. There's a cave by Dew that you need the statue to get into. You can't go backwards from Tears Lean without the witch's shoes. Or the shoes, they're, they're just called in Randomizer. Okay, so to get to the blacksmith's house, you just go down a few more screens, or you can take this very different looking side path. Here he is. Oh wow, <laughs> it's two key items! <laughs> That's funny. There's a gold split I'll never beat. Indeed, Fantasy Freak 112. Willow has a randomizer, it's pretty recent. So this is my uh, tutorial-ish commentary about how to play it. So I've gone everywhere I can go, actually. Can't go backwards from Tears Lean. I can't go forwards from the bar without the Waka Seed. And even if I had the Waka Seed, um, I could only go through the cave and then get to the towers um, where there is a Laura down at. And actually, you need Blue Crystal or Red Crystal to get into either of the towers. And if you don't go into the River Cave, um, Sorsha and her blockade is blocking the, the walk to um, Mountain House, I call it. And we can't go into Green Cave without the powder either. They, the Dan added a, an empty chest. Okay, there's usually a pink snake here. It's possible to beat the snake without a shield, but it's pretty hard. There's usually a snake there. Same deal. It's even harder because there's very little room to juke the flames. Yeah, I know. There's uh, not, a, not a lot of people streaming this game. Rodster is asking me to do another any percent run, but first I have to learn how. Anyway, so to get into Tira's lean, uh, you have to talk to this witch who's standing on the cliff here. And you're not gonna succeed without a good shield, just because of this fight. There's no room to juke these flames on this staircase. Um, your other option is to just, like, run through the guy. Actually, I'm gonna switch to my longsword, just to show, like, how you'd fight this guy. If all you have is your longsword and a good shield, you just have to go like this for a long time. It should be harder than this, because even your stabs are slower if you're low level. You gotta, like, walk out this guy to get him to charge. They get more and more expensive. I know. Yeah, this, this is why you want to get into melee range with these guys. Because the projectiles complicate things a fair bit. You can do one stab if you don't think you can. I don't know if I'm uh, totally solid on my 7 against 3, I just kind of practiced it today while I'm walking back from uh, what I did today. Anyway. Yeah, this person says like a bunch of nonsense, but you can't walk into that log gate in front of Tira's lean without, without talking to them. <laughs> By the way, hi Meowoot. You're probably gonna be on YouTube now. But yeah made it up the, uh, the Tiras Lean Cliff. So yeah, without a good shield, you would need either the Heal Mace to just, like, tank enough damage from the things that you can't kill, or you um, need Spectre, which turns you into a slime and it prevents encounters, but Spectre costs 50 MP, so you'd still have to reach level 3 or 4, probably? What's my max MP? Max MP at level 4 is 68. I don't know if you have enough at level 3. So this is the Castle of Tears Lane. Um, there's two items upstairs. I'm still kind of fuzzy on where, like, how to get upstairs. There's also these uh, poorly equipped guards in this castle. Not skeletons. Skeletons have shields, but the guards in this castle are very much under budget. Oh, this is the dungeon. This is like the exit. Well, after we beat the boss, anyway. 
Well, there's two ways to get upstairs. There we go. Just get down low enough to make the skeleton face south. Oh, that bubble is a magic using enemy. All they do is split in half, and every time they split in half, they take away 10 MP from you. You don't want to you don't want to stick around on any screen with those bubbles if you haven't got a devil eye or um, bombard or thunder magic to destroy them that way. There should be there should be a doorway to go upstairs somewhere around here. Yeah, this is uh, one problem with this game. It's Confusing. Lots of rooms look the same. Oh, this guy's another magic user. Oh, yep, this is what he does. He turns you into a pig. Just like in the movie. You can't leave the screen while you're a pig. You have to just dodge these bubble attacks. Can't use magic, can't attack. These guys are the worst. like this for quite a while, too. Okay. This was... Oh, this was the dungeon. Okay, better idea. There's two ways to get upstairs. There's one in the east wing. There's also a way in the west wing. So, let's just try... Oh, yeah. Here's the other reason why you want to get into Tears Lean. These guys are easy experience. Even if you have a longsword, you can just go like this. By the way, Kazar Sword is not only strong, but it also seems to be very light. Like, even if you're underleveled, you should be able to swing it fast. Just level 4 is still, like, you know, that's, that's early game levels. This is normally the second last area that you go to, so I'm definitely underleveled. But I can get a lot of experience here. Okay, so, like I said, upstairs there are two items, but they're a bit confusing to get to. The upstairs is organized into three clusters. There's nothing in this left cluster. You have to go along the top to get to the three areas. These guys don't have shields. They fight just like skeletons, but you can also block their attacks with your shield, by the way. <laughs> Starter sword and highest DPS. It's not. But it's just, I just want to show off, like, uh, even if you have Longsword, these guys are just, like, free experience. Look at that on level 5. These, the brown ones give 100, and the blue ones give 110. Like, for reference, the skeletons, which are way harder to kill, give 50, 60, and 70. For, uh, white, blue, and red, respectively. Okay, blue crystal. That'll let me go into the, the towers. Although I probably won't even go there. You know, like, you only really go there if you can't go anywhere else because they're it's a pretty hard area to get to. You need the flute and you have to kill Moose, the, the Sonic the Hedgehog spiky boss. So yeah, this middle cluster upstairs has a treasure chest in the bottom left corner there. So now I gotta get out of here. Now I'm back along the, the highway, the artery at the top. Or I guess aorta would be the term. Skeletons can find a shield. And look how much harder they are to kill. This game's got some funny design. Okay, now we're in the east wing of upstairs. Okay, here's the... Oh, I just want to show off, like... Where is the entrance to the east wing? You don't want to go to the east wing anyway, because it's got all these magic-using enemies. It's in a room shape like that, but I couldn't find it. My apologies. There's, uh, there's maps on the internet. I can't remember the, the good site. I think it's, uh, RPG Classic Shrine, or whatever it's called. Here's the other item of upstairs. 
Wing Sword upgrade. Okay, I'm glad I found this. This is an interesting thing to talk about. So this isn't a thing that appears in my inventory, but it's definitely a flag. Like, the Wing Sword normally goes here. Uh, when you find the Wing Sword by itself, it's... It's even weaker than the long sword, and also heavier, like, it, I think it always swings at minimum speed. It seems like the worst sword in the game, but, um, like in the vanilla game, this bird anthro named Adik gives it to you, and he's like, please give this wing sword to my brother, Abang. And then when you find the meet Abang in Nokmar Castle, and you show him the wing sword, he's like, oh, it's my brother's sword! Let me put my strength into my brother's sword! And then it becomes the best sword in the game. Now, the other thing about that is, like, not only do you get, like, the upgraded wing sword, um, there's a shack outside of Tiras Lean that you can't go into unless you have the wing sword. <laughs> so, now that we have the wing sword upgrade, we can go get another item. And I'm also just gonna go get that right now, because I gained a level while I was in here, and remember how I said the game doesn't save your experience if you're in a dungeon? That includes, like, in this castle, Tiras Lean. Does every sword get that fast? Um, yeah, actually. At level 18. Level 18 is max level at a 65,000 experience. But you only need to reach level 13 to finish the game at 39,000, and even that takes a long time. I mean, bosses are the best way to get experience. You can only get them, like, once per playthrough, of course. Oh, I'm really close to level 6, actually. So I'll probably, yeah, I'll snapshot level 6, and then I'll go fight the boss of Tiras Lean. Is like the biggest chunk of experience we have access to. So that's the other other reason why you want to get into Tiras Lean as soon as possible. You get three items, and you also get like huge chunk of experience from an easy boss. Okay, I got a shield, but I've already got the best shield. I'm just gonna go uh, west one screen in Tiras Lean, just farm those brown guards. 100 experience of Bob. Yeah, Tiras Lean, really good place to get into. <laughs> you get good farming, four, four easy items, huge chunk of experience from Eborsisk, the boss. However, I am still underleveled. Eborsisk would do a lot of damage to me. So just in case I get humiliated, I am gonna step outside to save my level. So Eborsisk is in the southwestern tip of the castle. I don't know the best route there for avoiding encounters, but I'm just going this way. Uh, other nice thing, though, um, like I said, there's four items. I grabbed two of them already. So there's this guy, Eric. He is from the movie. He uh, gives you an item and then dies because the horse just killed him. Got bombard magic. Okay, that's the earthquake magic. It costs 20 da uh, 20 MP and it does okay damage. And then the horse just goes right here in this room. So Eric, Eric gets you fully healed before you go in. So yeah, we are under level. You do want to respect the Borsus. Like, these fireballs are very slow moving, but remember I have the best shield in the game. If I didn't have that shield, I could get owned by those. You want to respect those fireballs. Like, getting hit by one of those would take off half my health. And you also don't want to get too close to a Borsus. <laughs> getting body checked also will do a lot of damage, but... Yeah, this is a very easy fight. I mean, I happen to have, like, the Wonder Sword and the best shield. But I could do that fight with, like, a faster swinging sword that's weaker. Same outcome. I should have equipped the long sword, actually, just to show, like, what a longer Aborsisk fight can look like. And yeah, after you beat Aborsisk, you get thrown in jail by General Kale. Little rhyme there. And then to get out of jail, you just walk into the bottom right corner here. And then Frangine and Rule break you out. And give you an item. Walk a seed! Alright, we got progression. So I was hoping I could get the powder, or uh, the crest, or the waka seed, or the shoes. I need one of those four things to 
actually get anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd actually be soft locked without one of those four things. So Powder would allow me to go through Green Cave, outside of Tears Lane here, and then towards Nokmar. Uh, Powder also deletes the, the Heal Ball chest, or like, well, it would be the Heal Ball in the vanilla game. Basically, Mountain House has like a, a one-way shortcut that's normally blocked by a chest, but once you have the Powder, that chest disappears, so it's like a, a shortcut towards Nokmar. Let's go back to bar. Oh look, I'm level 8 now. I got like 5,000 experience from... <laughs> from Eborsisk. I'm gonna check my TNL actually. Cause there's actually some good grinding outside of the bar. Oh, 3,000 away. Okay, well, I'm gonna use Bombard anyway. So yeah, the cane is a, a thing you need to beat the game, but it's like really bad normally. Like, how many shots is it gonna take to kill this skull? Uh, too many. I guess the cane doesn't even do damage, or maybe it does one damage. That's the sound of not having enough MP to use whatever your thing is. Sorry for making everyone sit through this long dialogue again. Yeah, here's a bit of lore about Moose the Hedgehog. If you fight Moose without the flute, when you go to get the last hit on Moose, he instead recovers a quarter of his health. So, like, the boss is immortal and you have to die to him, so... Do not go into Moose's boss room without the flute. In fact, I'm able to go there. I guess, yeah, that's just where I'm going next the only place I can go to progress. Okay, so here's some crabs, the strongest enemies in the game. Uh, I'm gonna use Bombard to get rid of them. It takes a long time, though. Oh! It's gonna take two Bombards to get the crabs. They give a hundred each. <laughs> so, a big payoff. Yeah, without the Waka Seed, I'd lose one HP every frame in here, and I would be dead before I even get around this corner up this alley, and up these stairs. That's Finn Rizal's cave, we have to come back there at level 13. Here's some more crabs, I'm gonna show, uh, I think I wanna have a faster sword, actually. Actually, can I swing the Kaiser sword fast? No, I can't. But that's the good, <laughs> that's a reliable way to deal with crabs. You have to wait for them to come out of their shells, and you... You'd better kill them, because what happens if you don't is they go back in their shells and then advance at you. <laughs> Very hard to deal with. Okay. Uh, this guy is immune to thunder magic, but you can bombard him. Earthquake. The opposite polarity. Oh yeah, you can't get the pellet unless you can walk onto it. Um, you have to, if you have to use a sword, uh, you have to use the devil eye sword get the 10 MP pellet. Oh wow, I didn't even kill this guy. Well, some, some costs. Actually, there's a treasure chest around the corner, so it's fine. <laughs> so this river cave is actually broken up into four smaller caves. Like, you go back onto the world map and into different cave entrances. It's kind of neat. This first section is shaped like a big spiral, unfortunately. It takes a long time to walk through. But, hey, at least the music in this game is good. Okay, so I'm gonna do something with these... Oh, no. Uh, I don't want to talk about what just happened. Unless this Bombard is enough to get rid of him. Oh, wait, Bombard only costs 10. I'm actually fine. Yeah, so those bubbles split up, and if there's ever more than four of them, they Zerg Rush at you. And, uh... We'll, we'll run off the screen. Go for it here. Because if they split again, they'll just take away all my MP. Okay, Bombard only costs 10. I didn't know that. I thought it cost 20. It does less damage than Thunder. 
Dragon Sword might be a good compromise for me, actually. Because I know I could swing that full speed. So Kaiser Sword for 65, or Dragon Sword for 47. I mean, personally, I prefer... Like, you know, stabs are... Stabs are still pretty quick, even if your sword is slow. So... I thought I could sing, swing the Kaiser Sword faster than the Wonder Sword. Looks like Dragon Sword is a good compromise, though. Like, it's half the strength, but way more than twice the speed <laughs> of Kaiser Sword, or Wonder Sword, even. Okay, so you want to go left over here. Beware of crabs, by the way. Crabs also shoot bubbles at you. You want to go left over here to bring these crabs out. So I guess we're going to find out what happens if you let the crabs retreat. Oh, crabs. I mean, a wise man just wouldn't fight crabs. But they give 100 each, and I do have to hit 39,000 experience by the end. Okay, so, um, a little bit of a guided tour of River Cave here. Moose's room is two rooms to the north, but we're not going to go there yet. We're going to go get two more items. And we do a little circuit, or three more items, actually. So there's a, thir a circuit we got to do. Um, you can either go in this entrance, or go one more screen to the east in there, and do it in reverse, basically. Although I think I... I'm just more likely to get lost going the, the other way. <laughs> I prefer going this way. So what you do, you gotta go south. More south. There's two chests in this southern section here. There's one right here. And then we gotta go another screen south, and there'll be another one over there. Oh, shoes! Okay, we can go backwards from Tiris Lane. Which is not a great option, there's only... <laughs> um, only two more items that way. But it's way better than, like, going the other way, where you need Spectre to walk over these, like, horrible little chomping mouths in the ground. Speaking of that, I still need Spectre and the Powder. Devil Eye Sword. Okay, good. I can, I can damage magic using enemies now. <laughs> Bee shoes. It's the witch's shoes. Um, to get technical, but a lot of the dialogue in the game is removed in the randomizer, so it's even harder to make sense of this game's nonsense directions. Oh, I still have bombard equipped. This is just a better way to deal with skeletons. It's a long animation, but it's. Safe. There's also like a chest right up ahead, so I can spend my MP and I'm gonna get it back. I mean, Thunder would be better because it's a much quicker animation, but it's more efficient than like trying to get those bees that are way off screen to try to come over to me. There's Thunder! Great! Thunder makes it so I can like farm as I go much more easily. I'm just gonna equip that right now. Pretty sure Thunder, like, I don't think there's anything in the game that survives Thunder. It's just the screen clear. Okay, well that guy was transforming, so he was invincible. <laughs> okay, and over here we're gonna meet uh, the ghost of Jenna. I guess I'm pronouncing her name in Chinese. <laughs> Maybe it's a uh, Zena. Xena. In the vanilla game, this is where you'd get the flute. <laughs> Acorn magic. Acorn magic uh, will freeze certain enemies. It doesn't work on skeletons. I think there's a lot of enemies it doesn't work on, but... It's most useful on those uh, horse flies that you meet in the outdoor areas.
Oh, I have the Devil Eye. I might be able to get that pellet. Nope, I can't reach. Guess I should have waited a little bit. Also note, Devil Eye doesn't work on regular enemies. It only works on magic-using enemies, so remember to unequip it. Slow sword, because I am about to fight Moose. So you can't use magic in boss fights, so I'm using my heal mace right now. I'm just gonna unequip a shield uh, briefly. <laughs> and I have a slow sword. So this is Moose's room. Don't go in here unless you have the flute. But I do have the flute right here. I guess that. Okay, so what happens with Moose? You hit Moose, he starts shooting spikes at you, and you can dodge them if you don't have a shield, but it's really hard and really nerve-wracking. <laughs> so I don't recommend fighting Moose without a shield. Yeah, Metal Shield is good enough to block these. I think any shield except the Wood Shield will do it. You can hit moves twice if you do a, a meaty stab. Moves will also give you an item when you when you beat him. So flute is a good thing to have. You get a little chunk of experience. You have the herbs. Oh yeah, I forgot that we can get a free item at Poe's house. I should have said that right at the beginning of my tutorial. Because the, the condition for getting an item from Poe's house is having the ocarina, and we start with the ocarina. The herbs are just kind of a vestigial, useless item in the current state of the randomizer. The vanilla game, um, there's like a long tunnel in Blue Cave that I didn't go down. Normally Poe is in there. Which crystal do I have? I have blue crystal. So does that mean I can go in the left or right tower? Looks like it's left tower. Red crystal for the other one. Actually, going up these towers without fleet magic is a really bad idea. Because normally you can use fleet and go back to the bottom. But because I don't have fleet, I'm gonna have to walk all the way back down. But it's like, I came all this way, I might as well see what I can get. I'll also get an MP refill at the top. So I can just use thunder on everything and not care. Although, well, there's, there's going to be a lot of encounters on the way up, so... I have to start watching my MP. Another thing you want to know about this area after River Cave. Uh, if you have the crest, you can get an item from the house in the middle. Oh, I didn't finish explaining the herbs. Yeah, in Blue Cave, um, basically when I went, there was a four-way room, and I went south for Matanda. If you go east, uh, there's a section where normally you'd find Poe. And Poe's like, I'm wounded, please get me some herbs so I can patch up my wing. And then if you do that, he gives you the ocarina. And then, um, yeah, that's why it's like Poe's house on, on the world map. Like Poe's owner lives there, but like I guess Poe is actually Poe actually owns the human. Today I learned. <laughs> so yeah, to, to show gratitude, um, the human will give you an item. Can't remember what you get there normally. I think it's uh, bombard magic or turf storm magic. Oh, there's gonna be six of them now. Oh, okay. I thought there was going to be too many and they'd rush at me. Yeah, a long time ago in the any percent speedrun involved, like, farming these bubbles to get close to level 13. It was just, like, 15 minutes of, like, watching them split and then carving them up. 
There's bubbles in Bad Mordo's castle, or like on the way to Bad Mordo's castle, that are worth more though. So if you're gonna do that, I suggest doing it there. I'm still swinging the Kaiser Sword slow. Hey, I'm about to hit level 10. Actually, let's get that Kaiser Sword on and see how it looks. I think it, it probably gets a lot better at level 10. Tip if you want to farm these bubbles, try to like get in the middle of them. Uh oh. <laughs> these guys can survive a bombard. That's funny. Oh, look how much faster I can swing the Kaiser Sword. Still swinging Devil Eye slowly though. Actually, I better keep it on. There's more bubbles around the corner. And I'll go back to Thunder. Thunder's better in many ways. <laughs> Another good thing to do is like, they take three hits with Devil Eye, soften them up a bit. The old bubbles always go to the right, the fresh bubbles are always on the left. Usually you want to like just take some hits to get them to uh, concentrate on the same space. Split them up. Nah, that wasn't so good. Hopefully, I get fleet from this guy at the top of the tower. Oh, yeah, this guy's immune to thunder. I don't recommend fighting these guys in general. I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Basically when they finish materializing and stop moving, they either like dash somewhere towards you or just like off the screen and then teleport somewhere else, or they'll cast thunder. Which, um, like the gray ones, their thunder doesn't hurt very much, it only does like 20, but uh, the other colors of tornadoes, I think their thunder can do much more. <laughs> Demonstrate a, like a decent bubble loop. I'm gonna try to bring them over more to this corner. There, it's kind of working. So if you want to do a bubble loop but you don't have Spectre and can't get into Nokmar, I guess you could do it here. <laughs> we also saw some bubbles in uh, River Cave. Although, actually if you have Powder, um, there's red bubbles on the way to Nokmar that give 100 each. That's probably the best place to farm. Arena here. No, I can't. Nope, the game considers this place a dungeon. You have to use Fleet to leave. So we gotta walk all the way to the bottom. Unfortunate. But it's not a total loss. I, I do still have to... You still have to get that 39,000 experience. Even though these bubbles uh, take away 10 MP when they split, they do give that 10 MP pellet when you kill them. So, as long as you have the Devil Eye, you can break even in MP. Or if you just, like, kill the first one you see and don't let them split, then you get plus 10 MP. Or 
Or I guess, all right, I guess I profited there. It's just you won't profit if you have to use Bombard or Thunder to get them. So if the bubbles get out of hand, if they reach a quantity more than four, so six or eight, then they run at you. Very hard to deal with because the Devil Eye is a, a heavy sword, right? So unless you, like, get a perfect stabbing rhythm to keep them at bay, like the Tass, then you're gonna get run over and they're gonna escape and you're gonna be missing a lot of MP. You'll be sad. But having Thunder or Bombard makes it manageable. Actually, let me try something. Does Renew work on these guys? It does not. Fascinating. experience while going up and down this tower. Oh right, I have... Oh, I don't have thunder equipped. Good thing I checked. Wow, I can swing the Kaiser Sword fast at level 11. It seems you don't get encounters on those screens if you're coming down in reverse. These, these towers, I would say, are a low priority to search, but I just checked because I had, I had a crystal and came all this way anyway after beating Booze. So yeah, if you have the crest, you'll get something from Alora Danan's mom in this room. Oh, the other one's just open. Okay, I thought I needed red crystal. Oh, okay, it's blue crystal to go in the left tower, and in the vanilla game, that's where you get the red crystal. And when you have red crystal, Elora Danan's mom will give you something. So you're supposed to go in this tower first <laughs> in the regular game. Again, I'm gonna have to go all the way back down. Oh, here, I'm gonna show off uh, how good acorn magic is. It's fun to like try to like set up the perfect position to hit all of them at once. And again, acorn acorn cost me what? Ten for each one? I could have just waited till four were on screen and then used thunder and done that twice. But I just wanted to show off like that's the primary use of acorn magic. Actually, Acorn, Acorn works on monkeys as well. I recommend Acorns versus uh, monkeys, if monkeys show up. I haven't got monkeys to show up, though. I haven't, you guys haven't seen the terror of monkeys. Acorn does not work on skeletons, of course.
I think I'm actually gonna hit level 13 before I find all the required items, the way this is going. Yeah, I heard Dota has a new hero. I haven't seen her yet, though. Apparently her numbers are way too high, so she's just getting banned all the time. But, you know, in a game like that, you kind of have to release heroes overpowered. Because if they're just bad, then it's like, everyone's like, lol, you're, you're picking the bad new hero, and then they slowly get buffed, and then everyone complains when they're suddenly OP. It's better to go the other way around, so that, like, people can be like, ah, I remember, release Graves, Blitzcrank, Cowboy Beat Boop, Free Elo Season 2, yarrrrr. <laughs> okay. East Tower, much easier to get up. <gasps> I got Spectre! Wow! Tower was actually required. Can't make money on an underpowered character. But in Dota, you, everyone has all the heroes all the time. You only pay for aesthetics in Dota. Or whatever useless features Dota Plus has. And I mean useless. W is an AoE stun that hits anyone near a tree. Hmm. Tree maker, eh? And before Timbersaw is banned every game? <laughs> I guess, I guess now is a good time to learn Timbersaw. I love how all the torches like light up on the lower levels too. This game is like such a visual triumph for the NES. Look at the, like, the wood grain detail on the planks. It looks like those towers in Demon Souls. Or like the wooden platforms in Blight Town and Dark Souls. Oh right, everyone buys Quelling Blade to cut the tree. Oh, you can like, queue up your W, at, but like the queue is instant, so like the tree will appear where you aim your W. That's nonsense! You should have to target the tree, like the tree should have to already exist. How? <laughs> Sounds like good old backwards Dota design. Just make, make it esoteric. Make it not make sense, and that, like, sounds like par for the course for Dota. Like, if it's- if it works the opposite of how you think it should, then it's Dota. Alright, I didn't get the crest, so... Yeah, I'm actually just done here. I, uh... Actually, there's two ways I can go. Kind of. Actually, no, there isn't. I have to go to Tiras Lean and go backwards. It's gonna be a long haul. I better go heal, though. Well, I can heal at Poe's house and also get, uh, item. If it's powder, then I guess I'm done. And I guess I'm go mode and just need experience. Dragon shield. It's like Witch Doctor's casket, but it scales off of attack damage. Q bounces and chunks everyone who got stunned. Yeah, no kidding. It sounds like you just only level two things on this hero. Alright, so we're going backwards from Tiras Lee. And it's it's confusing. So if you try to get on this bridge, the bridge will just wiggle and you won't be able to get on it, and like it won't make sense why. You need the witch's shoes, because the bridge is cursed. Another thing that sucks about walking on this bridge is sometimes there's red skeletons. So be prepared for that. <laughs> You're either going to have a very tense fight with your, your longsword and your nothing, or hopefully you have some magic to help. Oh, you have like Shadow Amulet as a talent? Wow. The powder! Okay, we're actually go mode now. But just to explain, um...
So going going backwards from Tears Lean is actually better in a way. Oh wait, we have to go south one more screen. So this person tells you the bridge is cursed. And for some reason, this sets up a trigger in the red cave that's um, further away. Like, in the, in the normal game, you go, like, through Red Cave, and then into Purple Cave to talk to this person, and then you have to go back to Red Cave uh, to talk to a guy who gives you the witch's shoes. But I already have everything, so... I'll just show off where the guy is, and then, uh... I think he's gonna give me the statue. I guess it, he might not necessarily give me. Like, technically I'm go mode, but I also just still need experience for level 13. I guess there aren't that many enemies along the way, or like, not great experience. But every bit helps. Might as well show off a little more of the game for the tutorial. So, wait. You can set, stand still, then teleport, and become invisible while teleporting. Sounds like, uh, Boots of Travel might be the way to go. I'm trying to figure out what role you'd put that hero in. Like, are they a mid, or a, like a ganker, or a support, or a carry? <laughs> Sounds like anything. Like, you know, classic Dota design. This hero can be whatever you want. Play, play in any role, in any lane. Playing your bid. Oh, for that uh, experience advantage and ganking potential. Makes sense. <laughs> Beauties over cuties. No cuteness allowed in my chat. <laughs> get lost in this cave. This cave has a lot of nothing dead ends. But at least the cave we're looking for is on the way. Oh, this might not even do it. Oh, it did. Cool. Right here? Yep. Flowing fire magic. That one just makes like a ring of fire around you, and some enemies just completely ignore it. It's it's got dubious usefulness. But I've seen it like just juggle and kill certain enemies before. Alright. So now that I have powder, there's only one place I didn't show off, and that's the gold statue cave outside of Dew. But I didn't get the statue. Well, if I find the statue, which I still could, there's, um, there's a chest on the way to Nokmar, and then I can get an item at Mountain House. And there's another item in Nokmar. And there's one item in the mountain path, the really long mountain path, in between River Cave and Mountain House. It's closer to River Cave, but I can't go that way because I don't have the crest. There's like Sorsha under Blockade, can't walk past it. don't have the powder, there's an empty chest blocking this cave entrance, and so you can't progress through the cave. Oh, I'm still swinging the Wonder Sword slowly. Kaiser Sword, way better deal. Oh, 
gonna stop in here. There's here's the item that's on the way to Nogmar that I was talking about. You have the crest. Okay. Wait, where did I get the powder? Oh, I got it from the top of that tower, didn't I? <laughs> so no way I'm gonna go back to Alora to that spot to see what the item there is. Some seeds can't be 100%ed, by the way. Sometimes, like... Like, for example, I had a seed where, like... The, the Chief of Dew, where, like, you need the wood shield for him to give you an item. The item he had was wood shield. The randomizer can just, like, self-block on essential items. So it may not be possible to 100% every seed. So I'm going to Nokmar early because we can fight General Kale, who's worth a big pile of experience. And there's also those red bubbles that uh, give a lot of experience, both on the way to Nokmar and inside Nokmar. Okay, so we made it through the cave. If you don't have powder, well, there's usually a chest there. Like, normally when you're walking from, like, Sorcha's Blockade, where you need the crest, you walk from there, to here, and then further up ahead you need Spectre to get into Red Cave. I got Fleet, that's actually really nice. That'll allow me to exit Nokmar when I'm done farming. You also want to talk to that guy in Mountain House, because that's like my next checkpoint, so if I die I'm gonna respawn there. It's not an Ocarina Waypoint though, unfortunately. total. Here's another screen with red flies. Yeah, those faces in the mountain. They get 200 each, but the only way to get rid of them is either thunder or casting bombard twice. I was thinking of using Thunder, but I realized that if I let them go up to 8, I wouldn't have any MP left, and then they would just steamroll me. Alright, I'll just let him converge a bit more. Make sure you wait for them to finish multiplying. If you fire your thunder too early, then like they they don't have a hurt box yet. You won't hit anything. Cool, level 12 already. And now this section has red skeletons. Only worth 70 each. Even though they're much more dangerous than those red bubbles. This screen is an Ocarina Return Point, and once you look at the screen, this is also your respawn point. So this guard that's coming up here is, is underpaid. He's like, oh no, a monster, and then runs away. So while you're a blob, while, while you're a specter, um, you will not, enemies will not spawn. However, you also can't open chests or talk to people. Another thing is, uh, once you have the Wingsword upgrade, a bang will spawn. 
on this corner. Wait, you don't? Why is there no a bang? What am I missing? I don't have ring, statue, red crystal. I do have bracelet, right? Oh, I don't have the actual wing sword. That's what I'm missing. <laughs> okay, so I guess I need the wing sword for a bang to appear. That's kind of funny. But yeah, if I had the wing sword, a bang would be there to give me a thing. city. Much easier to farm them in these open rooms. So yeah, what you want to do is uh, soften up the right side while also hitting the, the left side, which becomes the new right side once they split. Of my HP for when I fight Kale. Close enough. I want to make sure I have uh, 20 MP left over to cast Fleet. I can't remember how much experience Kale gives, but this should put me close to 13 or right over it. Yeah, I've done that a few times, Tundra. The thing is, Every bubble that splits takes 10 MP, so uh, they're gonna like take away 70 of my MP, and then I need 20 left in my float to zap them, and then I get 80 MP back. I guess that costs 10 MP to do that. I love the speech Willow or uh, that Mad Mardigan gives there, by the way. Okay, so fighting Kale. I find it's good to have um, a sword that attacks quickly here. There's a couple ways to fight this guy. Basically, you can just have like a fencing duel, where like <laughs> just hit him once and then let him go nuts. However, uh oh. It's easiest to just go kind of like this. Get in the corner. Okay. <laughs> Again, um, Bad Morta's army budget, not very big. Couldn't give her best guy a shield. Had 20, turn 2, pick up the MP right away. Oh, that's a good point. I never thought of, like, leaving the, the mana crystal on the ground. Anyway, I'm level 13, so let's just go finish the seed. I'm surprised I'm coming this close to my PB. I guess I'm getting better at Willow Randomizer. Even with these big explanations. <laughs> It's unfortunate I didn't get to go in the statue cave to talk about, um, like, how to fight Bogarda and where the items are, but basically you want to go south of the first fork um, to get a chest, like, way in there. That was a bit out of the way, though. And to get to Bogarda, you just kind of go east and there'll be a four-way room with a chest in it. You go south from there and uh, hook around counterclockwise and then Bogarda's in that cave. Bogarda should be really easy, even in the 
randomizer with like no matter what you have. Okay, so Finrazel gives the, the magic sound effect twice. I like to split on the second one. Because the first one is just the attempt to change Finrazel back to her human form. Now I have upgraded Kane. So the reason why level 13 is required to finish the game is because the upgraded Kane is the only thing that can damage Babmorda's first form. And you need to you need to land every single shot or else you have to like die. You have to take a dive. You won't win the fight unless you land every single shot. So if that's intimidating, you might actually want to grind to level 14. <laughs> But I think, uh, like most NES games, the AI in this game is a little bit exploitable. You'll see that there's like a certain crooked way that Bad Morda moves. If you can get Bad Morda moving straight left or straight right, and if you shoot with good timing, you should win. I'll show how to do that. bang for your buck if you don't have the upgraded wing sword. So yeah, just in case you, like, get hit and wanted to use your heal mace or something, if you have the devil eye, you can farm some bubbles to get back to full MP. Actually, I want to try out uh, the thing Tundra was talking about. Can I leave the MP on the floor? Oops. Looks like one less guy is spawning. Oops. I... <laughs> I minus 40 MP. I don't think there's a lifetime spawn limit, it's more like we're hitting the, the NES sprite limit. Okay, let's, let's go for the big split and see how many come out. Whoa. Um, what? I don't know why there's one in the ceiling now. Okay, well now I just have to farm them back to full MP. <laughs> Actually... What if it works with, uh, just two pellets on the ground? Maybe that can work. Okay, 
okay. Am I gonna go to 131? Oh, okay. So I guess you can leave two pellets on the ground. As a float, in case you're, like, starting from zero MP. That's level 14, by the way. 53,000! There is an option in the randomizer to lower the max level requirement, by the way. If you don't think you can commit, like, two hours to Willow Randomizer Seed. My first, my first randomizer took, like, two hours, twenty minutes, I believe. Okay, I'm back to full. Chaos Finale with the raid, thank you. I was feeling kind of tired today, but uh, now that I've kind of gotten this uh, Willow Randomizer tutorial almost done, I think I can do Fizanadu after this. Kind of got off to a late start today and just knew I wasn't going to have enough time for a decent Nocturne run, so um, I might do it tomorrow. I might, oh, I might not be able to, actually. My day is getting bisected by a Zoom call. Bisected. Every time. <laughs> Nocturne until dawn. No, I need, I need to get revenge on that Fizanadu dagger percent run. towards the final boss. I don't think there are any uh, bubbles that can sap your MP, thankfully. Wait, you got two PBs in the same category? Huh. Thunder just came in and said you got two PBs. I figured they'd be in different categories. <laughs> but you did say you got back to third. That's great. Okay, here's Batmorda. So like I said, the only thing that can damage the first form is the upgraded cane. You can't miss a shot or else you have to die and come back and do it again. So what you want to do is get that Morta coming at you either straight left or right. Kind of works better on like the lower part of the arena. Okay, here we go. <gasps> I think I missed a shot. Those little flames can absorb your shots. Yep, I have to I have to do it again. Amazing. Both in any percent. Nice. All right, back into the fray. I can't remember the last time I failed the Bad Morta fight actually. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, part of the tutorial, showing off what failure looks like. And Badmorda's little flames usually drop in like the center of her sprite, or I guess where the feet would be, except she pretty clearly doesn't have feet. The usual, uh, Banshee art style of just like being arms and tatters. Not, nothing below the arms. And now it's all warm in here because of this lamp, so. <laughs> Let's go back to having that cold wind. Salty breeze. Salt 
Bolt is in the air. It's a long walk back to Bab Morda. Fade to black when you head in a doorway, too. This game is very impressionistic in its art style. Don't be shy of taking some hits for Spab Morta, because uh, her second form is quite helpless. <laughs> you just swing your sword and win, pretty much. Don't be afraid to take some hits to set it up. There you go. Time your shots well. You don't want to shoot too quickly because your shots knock her back and you might hit a flame that she left behind. So yeah, now in this phase you just you just swing your sword and go ham. You could like try to pin Bad Morda in the corner for superior DPS. That's time. Still working on my corner pin. So yeah, that's Willow Randomizer. Even if you haven't played Willow, um, I'd recommend playing the Randomizer. It's a pretty fun way to experience the game because you just get to explore. You can do the content in any order you want. As soon as you have a good shield, you can test your Dark Souls tenacity to get into Tira's Lean and get the, the power rush of getting way ahead of the experience curve some easy items. Just remember to go to Poe's house first, <laughs> unlike, unlike me. Just go to Poe's house immediately. Then go to Do. Check the bottom left house. You can go to Monkey Cave if you have uh, a decent weapon, I guess. <laughs> Actually, I'd probably just say go to Monkey Cave at a higher level when you have more health or you can swing the longsword quickly. Either that or some, uh, like, combat magic. Fire Floor would help protect you from monkeys, or Flowing Fire is what they call it when you open the chest. Flowing Fire would help protect you from monkeys. Acorn freezes them. Um, obviously Bombard or Thunder would also be really good against them. Just, just blow them up before they even leap on you. Um, what else? You can go check the snakes outside of Dew. That's like, those are easy enemies. You'll hit level 2 on the way there. And then after that, I guess you go to the bar. And, uh, there's two chests by Mad Mardigan. Then go into Blue Cave in reverse. You'll get an item from Sherlindria, and then there's four items in Blue Cave. So, from there, you should be able to open things up. You'll probably have a good shield, so you could go into Tiras Lean and get four more items. And then from there, you'll have Statue to go into the Statue Cave by Dew. You'll have Shoes to go backwards through Tiras Lane. You'll have Waka Seed to go to River Cave. You'll have uh, <laughs> Spectre and Crest, hopefully. Well, you'll have or Crest and Powder, which will allow you to go backwards from Mountain House to River Cave. I actually had to do that in a seed. I had to go the, I didn't have Wakazid, I had to go the long way, all the way to get my upgraded cane from Finrazel. So that's my Willow Randomizer.